Welcome to the video series for Semantic Messaging Gateway. This video shows you how to create a content filtering policy that adds email threat isolation to Semantic Messaging Gateway. You must set up your email threat isolation instance and have a subscription before you can add email threat isolation. Now let's take a look at how Semantic Messaging Gateway and email threat isolation work together to protect your users. In the Semantic Messaging Gateway Control Center, you add a content filtering policy that applies to all incoming messages. When Semantic Messaging Gateway receives a message, this policy modifies every URL in the message to point to your email threat isolation instance. After the message is delivered and a user clicks a modified link, the browser redirects to email threat isolation. From there, the user gets the same experience as when they browse the web directly but they're protected by the threat isolation technology. Now let's take a look at how to create a content filtering policy that adds email threat isolation protections to Semantic Messaging Gateway. In the Semantic Messaging Gateway Control Center, select Content, Policies, Email, and then click Add. On the Add Content Filtering Policy page, click Select to use the blank template. Enter a name for the policy. Under Conditions, select Inbound Messages. This is important because when a recipient clicks a link in an email, the link is redirected to your email threat isolation instance. Outbound recipients don't have access, so the modified links would always fail for them. Only internal recipients can be protected. You'll also want to disable track violations of this policy in the dashboard and reports, since this policy will apply to every inbound message. Now click Add to add a new condition. On the Content Filtering Policy Condition page, you can select any condition. In this case, we want to isolate all URLs, so we'll select For All Messages and then click Add Condition. Next, under Actions, click Add. In the Configure an Action dialog box, scroll all the way to the bottom of the list and select Modify Clickable URLs in Message. For Type of Service, select Email Threat Isolation. In the Prepend Value field, enter a string that redirects the browser to your Semantic Email Threat Isolation instance. The Prepend string must be in the format HTTPS colon double slash plus the fully qualified domain name of your Email Threat Isolation instance plus the query string forward slash question mark URL equals. Then click Add Action. Under Actions, make sure the string you entered is correct. This string will be added to the beginning of every URL in each incoming message. When a recipient clicks a link, the browser is redirected to email threat isolation. At the bottom of the page, select the Policy Groups checkbox to apply this rule to all your policy groups or if there's a reason to exclude certain policy groups, you can select the groups individually, then click Save. On the Email Content Filtering Policies page, move the Email Threat Isolation policy to the top of the list to ensure that no other policy interferes with this one. Or make sure that higher priority policies are all non-conflicting. Your connection to email threat isolation is now complete. Each time a recipient clicks a link in an inbound email, their browser is redirected to your email threat isolation instance and the user is protected.